Man, look, we got Hot Boy Turk, Turk from the Hot Boys, two timer. Mr. I Got Money, two nine. Yeah. New Smile, fresh out of prison for a while or whatever now, but I'm glad he home and stuff like that, man, because, you know, Turk been one of my favorites and stuff like that from the Hot Boys. He was always like real gangster. Him and BG was always super raw. But like I said, we got Turk from Cash Money, bro. He kept his word. And, um, we doing it, whatever. I flew all the way out of Atlanta, whatever, and Turk fresh off the road, bro, from getting this, taking the goals out and all that. He getting his grown man on. Still numb, still numb, man. Still numb and all that. Yeah, he still yeah. kept his word, bro. Turk, man, bring it, you go um, bring it back to New Orleans, whatever, where it all started and all that. How was it growing up in New Orleans? I read some of your book or whatever. You were talking about how you was living in the Magnolia, I mean, um, the Mel for me, because that's your mom and dad yeah. and grandma and everybody stayed there. Old yeah. side, new side, all that. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from the Mel for me project. Shout out to the Mel um like five years old i moved to the magnolia and that's where i got all my you know my my soldierism from you know what i'm saying growing up in the magnolia you know everything that i learned man from street hustling you know what i'm saying thugging you know drugging and thugging you feel me just basically everything everything right. that i didn't did i got it from the third world uptown magnolia tc right. you feel me right yeah. but, I, but like i said how was that like i said growing up in the milk i remember you say your dad that was crazy we told that story about how your dad had left you on a bus mm -hmm. and you was like kind of wondering what your dad had when yeah. he left you on a yeah. bus he was like four years old like i was like yeah. how did his daddy leave him to my try dad, to make him feel my like my dad my dad man and what's your dad my dad, too? my dad, my dad never whooped me, you know what I'm saying? And he always wanted me to have that independence, you feel me? And um, I used to be a little crybaby, you know what I'm saying? And um, I was spiral, you know what I'm saying? And um, this particular time, man, I, I probably was crying, in, you know what I'm saying? And we was on our way to the Joy. Remember they had the Joy, Joy on Canal Street. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Canal yeah, so we was on our way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We was on our way to the movies, you know what I'm saying, to the show that what we right, call it, yeah, you feel right. me? And um, he act like he was getting off the bus and leaving me, you feel me? I don't know how he wound up being at the next stop, but you know the stop's so close. He probably ran or whatever, I don't know. But, um, you know, he met, met me at the next stop, you feel me? I was crying, but I think he was trying to teach me my independence yeah. in a, a awkward way or whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? To this day, I don't know why he did it, but... um. You know, yeah, I was crying, man. He left me on the bus. You know, I, I, I feel like, because I do it with my son. I always want him to be independent, and his mama kind of, like, cuff him. Mm -hmm. You know how the mamas are with the boys, you know what I'm saying? They they more overprotective of the boys than the girls. And my mama got all three boys, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I think what I what I got from it, too, when I was reading it, is like, like you said, he wanted to show you if somebody ever do leave you or whatever. Yeah. Like, even though it was, like, really young, because I know that was kind of traumatized. In the, in the bus driver, you said it was your dad's friend, so he yeah. was kind of in on it together. Yeah. But I think that he was trying to show you, like I said, if people leave out your life or whatever, you got to still be able to find your way. Yeah. You still be able to, like, man up or whatever, because yeah. you might get lost in the store. You might up. get lost at the field. He fifth. wanted me to man up at four years old. You that was hell of a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how was that, too? I know you said, like you said, your, um, your grandmother, you had they had a good side of the mouth mm -hmm. and the, um, the bad side, yeah, something yeah. like that. How was that? Because you said your uncle was like a hustler yeah. that you looked up to or whatever. And then you even talked about how one of your uncles had gotten a fight with your other uncle because yeah, he stole the yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, That's my uncle, Black Boy. That's the one I wanted to be like. You know, he was like the breadwinner of the family, you know what I'm saying? He was giving us 10s and 20s before we even know what money was. You know, he had the mopeds, the, you know, the Cadillac on Trues and Vols, you know what I'm saying? The 98 Cadillac, I think that's what they called it, you feel me? And, um, man, you know, Black Boy was hustling. He was a teenager when I was a toddler, you know what I'm saying? But I used to see him coming in with all this money and the eight ball jackets and the Four finger rings, and he had a mouth full of goals at a, at a young youngster. You know what I'm saying? And I just idolized that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, one day my uncle had my grandma used to keep my uncle stash, the younger brother. And um, I watched my older uncle. He had just got out of jail. You know, he was always in and out of jail. My uncle Jerome. Right. He went in my grandma's room. My grandma used to have my 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 younger uncle stash in a little toolbox, a red toolbox. Right. So my uncle, by him being a penitentiary nigga, I guess he peeped the play or whatever, whatever, or he knew, you know what I'm saying, from paying attention. But I'm woke in the wee wee hours, I see him lifting up my grandma though. My grandma was old, you know what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. had gangrene, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. He go in there, he get the toolbox. So I'm knowing you ain't supposed to have that toolbox, you feel me? But I wasn't gonna say nothing if nothing wouldn't have came up, cause you know what I'm saying, I mind my business. 
but this is my uncle Kelvin, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, you know, this, this is my dog, this is what I want to be like. So when he came in there and he made it like it was an issue, what my toolbox and somebody, uh, uh, who been in mama room and nobody could go in mama room. So I was like, um, I saw Uncle Jerome go in the room, so bam, my uncle instantly got mad because he was going, he was checking everybody, you feel me? He went, my Uncle Jerome was across the street by this female. He had then bought us some roses and champagne. And this you know, was in the mouth of me? Yeah, he, he, he had bought us some roses, not champagne, um, wine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to wine and dine. Yeah, he some had, nice shit, yeah. yeah. so bam, my uncle went over there. And saw like how she got all this in some kind of way he found a toolbox. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he had in the toolbox, some work and some money, you know, some rings and stuff like that. My uncle had to win pwned all that. So him and my uncle started fighting. My uncle B, he fresh out of jail. My uncle Black Boy, he, you know, he a little, he about your size, right. you know what I'm saying? Man, so this is the first time I seen somebody shoot a gun, you feel me? And um Man, my uncle, my uncle couldn't handle him with the hands, you know what I'm saying? So he picked up a two by four. My grandma used to have this little two by four behind her door mm. to lock. If you ain't in there, you locked out. At a certain so, time. Right. So he, my uncle grabbed the two by four. So some kind of way, my other uncle snatched it back, but he went and ran and got the gun. Got the gun. So my other uncle running down the steps, he just started busting that boom, boom, boom. He ain't hit him though, you know what I'm saying? But he was trying to, you know right. what I'm saying? And um. Yeah, he took a loss that day, man. He ain't never get that back. I don't think he did. Nah, you know? that's a crazy story. Now to say, now was that your grandmother that you said you liked her food? And I know one of your grandmas you said her Ooh. food wasn't that good, and the other one was. Because I had a grandma like yeah, that too. Yeah, like yeah. my mama, mama was a great cook. Yeah. She was originally from Napoleonville, and my dad, mama from Uptown. Her cooking wasn't as so I kind of related yeah. to which one was better. So that was the one that cooked the best. Nah, my grandma and Bertha, she used to man like mayonnaise jars. You know, mm -hmm. it come in the jar. You gonna have your name on it with your water in there. Right. She had the bowls on the stove with your name on there. You know, she had like twelve children and they and they children. You feel me? So she feeding everybody. But it was something about her rice. It mm. was always gummy and hard. Like how you get <laughs> gummy and hard rice. You know what I'm saying? Hard at the tip, gummy. It just was wasn't right. It wasn't the right texture. You know what I'm saying? And man, every time she had that rice. But the crazy part, most of my uncles wind up being chefs. You feel me? So I'm like, damn, my daddy was a chef too, you feel me? So I wonder if they just had to be a chef because of my grandma and Bertha, you feel me? But at the same time, my grandma had gang green mm -hmm. on her legs, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So she really could stand get kitchen, down yeah. like she used to, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know, yeah, man, I remember that bro. But one thing about it, she kept everybody fed. You know what I'm saying? But it just was that rice. It was the rice. It just was that rice, it was man. Right. And all your cousins that's watching this probably gonna be like, Oh yeah, they lying. know about that rice. They right. know about bird the rice, man. You now what me? your grandma was that was the good cook you said? Now my, my grandma, that's my mama mom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, she used to work at a school, so she was a cafeteria worker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she knew all about cooking and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And um only thing I ain't like from her, she used to make me eat these damn black eyed peas, you know what I'm saying? I remember one time it was Christmas. And my granddaddy, he just passed away too, man, about oh, a month ago. Day. Yeah, um, my grandma passed and my other grandma passed Sorry, too. Yeah, man. Um, so my granddaddy went out, he ringing the bell like ding, 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 ding. You know, we thinking the Santa Claus, you feel me? So she like, okay, Santa Claus coming, you hear the reindeer, they go to the noise. So bam, I started putting sugar in the black eyed peas, man, start eating it, man. I can't stand black eyed peas to this day. My grandma, me, man, eat them damn black eyed peas. That's the only thing I ain't like. Them motherfuckers taste like. They just take like some burnt um, Boston baked beans or some shit, you know what I'm saying? So you definitely don't want to see that on the New Year's, no black eyed peas. My, my wife just tried to fix that, I said, and that was my, my memory. Right. My grandma made me eat put a little sugar on it. That shit was still nasty. And your wife originally from Memphis, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's where well, we just come from, man. Fresh off the road, man, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get back into, like you said, the beginning of the story, too. What do you like about Memphis a lot, too, or whatever? That, no what I like, like about Memphis, man, I, I when I when I first went to Memphis, I was on tour, you know, and of course, you know, we didn't been on tour with Cash Money in Memphis, and we stayed messing with, you know, Three Six Mafia. Shout out to them, you know what I'm saying? We shot the player Why You Hate Me in Hurst Village, you know, and um, I just love Memphis, man. Like we used to love they females. Mm. Like back in the days, I had a girlfriend in Memphis, and it's ironic that I wind up. Going on tour, and I met my my wife in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? Me and her got cool. You know what I'm saying? We was together, and um, 
Shit, man, it just was like love at first sight, you know what I'm saying? She rocking with me, you know, on my lowest, at my lowest moments, you know what I'm saying? When I was on the heroin cocaine, you know, and um, she never judged me, man, you feel me? And I actually wanted to stop doing drugs because of her, you feel me? And um, to one. me, that's like the best thing that I ever, you know, got out of Memphis was my family, you feel right. me? My wife and my kids, you know what I'm saying? That's what I really love about it, but there's a lot of talent out there. I remember um, I was I was I was on the road on tour, and I had got Yo Gotti, um, Mac E, um, I think Criminal Man, Le Chat, Gangsta Black, all us. Like I had a vision way back then. It was before they blowed up. I did I was doing songs with all of them. You know what I'm saying? Don Trip. You know, Pistol, God bless his soul, you know what I'm saying? Like, all he do, like, man, God, he got a song called Throw Your Sets Up back in the days. I was doing music with all these guys in Memphis. And me and the dude who wound up being, you know, the snitch on my case who sent me to prison, you feel me? Um, we was putting a tour together where we was trying to bring all them on tour. It never happened, you know what I'm saying, because of the situation. But that was the vision that I had way back in the days, bro. You know, so you I was trying to bring Memphis. the whole. I was trying to bring them, bring them, you know, because Memphis kind of reminded me of New Orleans. And that's where I was going with the church. Yeah. So I'm glad. And I want to say that. The reason, well, first of all, I want to say that. I want to say this too because I remember my brother in law from Memphis. He's from Orange Mound. He was telling me something. I don't know how true this is, but this is what he said. Or somebody told me that when y'all did the Player White Hating video, that was a project of, I don't know, Bloods or something like that. And they didn't really like all the different kinds of bands or something. Vice Lord. Vice Lord, that's what yeah. it was. Vice Lord. Yeah. He said the dudes were like, hold oh, up, man, who these dudes is with all these different color rings on. So that is true. When y'all I mean, did. I don't remember, you know, shit. You know, I was on my shit. You right, you're like, but, but I didn't got locked up when I was locked up at 201, I remember. Um, shout out to my dog D, man, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, I was the little dude that was such, such, such. And he was Vice Lord, I right. believe. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I remember, okay, they had them Vice Lords in her village. In that project. You know? All right, so back to that. Um, you were saying about the, the similarities. People always tell me New Orleans and, and, and Miami. I always say New Orleans and Memphis, the reason why. And Florida. Florida too, but the yeah. reason why I say Memphis the most because Bill Street Bourbon, blues, yeah. jazz. Um, they known for their food. Murder, barbecue, murder. Like, murder, murder. Kill, uh, kill. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's a lot of poverty. It's a it's a. You, you know, know what? That, that, that's that's what attracted me to Memphis. Like I used to go in South Memphis, mm -hmm. um, in the Kansas Court apartment. You know, I'm not gonna really speak on it a lot, but um, I had met some guys out there, and you know, they had what I like. You feel me at the time? You know what I'm saying? And um, I used to be out there, man, thugging with them. You know what I'm saying? They was the folks. You feel me? But um. I didn't know nothing about no gangs or none of that, you feel me? Because we ain't affiliated, you know what I'm saying? But them dudes treated me with, with, with respect. They was fans, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, I wasn't really just trying, like, I was on a run at the time when I wound up going to Memphis, mm. you know what I'm saying? And um, when I went out, I was like, damn, this shit just like New Orleans. I started doing the same shit that I was doing in New Orleans in Memphis for the two months that I, that I was out there, right. you know what I'm saying? And um, the music scene was crazy, bro. Like, you know, I, I, to me, honestly, I feel like Atlanta, where I'm at now, I feel like Memphis influenced Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, New Orleans influenced Atlanta, and Atlanta made their own sauce. Yeah, you get the crunk music, you don't yeah. get crunk music. I mean, you don't get trap music without crunk music from everything that was going on yeah. in Memphis. With Squeaky and Paul and all them. And like I said, it's just like I said, the murder is the... the and, um, you know, they on the river, by yeah. the Mississippi River, we is too, they 65% of African American, we like 61%. Miami is more of a Spanish community. It's mixed. It's, yeah. it's mixed, but it's a lot more like Cubans. But it's certain, certain areas like, you know what I'm saying, Opelika yeah, and, and, like and, and Carroll you know, City and stuff like yeah, that. Like they, they inner city remind you of New Orleans. Now I know Miami got a lot of Haitians, but I tell people a lot of Haitians went to Miami during the 60s, during Papa Dot regime. A lot of the Haitians was coming to New Orleans way before the, after the Haitian Revolution. Shout out to they, my dog Magazo too, man. Yeah, free Magazo. Man. Yeah, so back, all right, so we got to go back to back to the beginning. So, all right, back to when you was in elementary school, in middle school, Tom LaFont Elementary School, in the middle of the Magnolia Project, right. people getting killed. Y'all got to stay in school because somebody just got murdered outside. How was that being in a project, a school in the middle of the, in the center of the project? That was on top of a grave, yeah. And on top of a grave, y'all, and people getting murdered, and y'all got to stay inside you for know, a while. It just was like, bro, like when you used to something, it, it, it don't bother you. It don't affect you, you know what I'm saying? You become immune to it, you know what I'm saying? You used to see it every day. I remember seeing my first dead body, man. Somebody turned green and purple, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, 
you know, like damn, you know what I'm saying? And and when you when you seeing this stuff, bro, it's like coming up, you just get a like I I hate to say it, accustomed to it. Like you don't even run from the gun, you don't duck no more, you know what I'm saying? And that's how it you was. To. You feel me? Yeah, you like, you know, it, it, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, man, damn, y'all heard that, man. We, got, we trying to see what kind of gun it was, you know, coming up. And and it kind of like um, make you want to be that way, you feel me? Like if you caught up in that structure, bro, like that's why it's so much going on now because people don't see other things. And when I was young, I didn't see other things, you know what I'm saying? That's all I was seeing. So murder, right. drugs, you know what I'm saying? In and out of jail, stuff like that, you feel right. me? Right. Somebody breaking in the car, so. That's what I say, <laughs> god damn, I'm gonna lie. Oh, um, damn, oh. Um, what I about to say, um, so, what was, um, why I was making Louis Shorty and Soldier Slim so important to you or just important to like, you know, the whole culture of New Orleans and stuff like that into the Magnolia? I mean, I mean because man, anything and any anybody that came out of that Magnolia, man, was very important. You know what I'm saying? Uptown, period. Right. You know, at the time we used to set trip like, you know, like it just was an uptown thing. Right. Yeah, UNLV, Magnolia Slim, you know, Magnolia Shorty came with the bounce thing, and that's all we knew. Right. You feel me? It's like they was a, a, a reflection and a representation of what we was living, you feel me? Right. So when you got a soundtrack that's right in front of you and you can touch them, they're accessible, right. you're going to look at them like, damn, man, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's what that was, man. They played a major part in the uptown music scene, you know what I'm saying? Um, especially UNLV, um, Magnolia Slim. Partners in crime, you know right. what I'm saying? Shout out to them boys, cause you know they 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 came with that and um and a few more dudes, man. Jubilee, you know what I'm saying? Um, man, the list goes on and now, on. Man. I, I, I want to ask you this too. What would you say about like? Cause I know a lot of times people feel like the West Bank don't get their fair shake. Like people always forget about Tim Smooth. People always forget about you know Joe Black, uh, Bust Down, uh, MC Thick, uh, you know Trey. Like a lot of them. How you? What do you feel about? You know, Rulers Juvenile, what do you feel about the West Bank? And you know, like, you know, cause in hip hop, there's a lot of people that paved the way before Jay-Z and them DMX, it was a lot of people that did it before them, but they didn't get a shine like y'all might have got being from uptown and stuff like that. I think we was biased, bro, towards um us being from uptown, downtown. Right. Across the river was like a, a, a island on its own, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then, you know, we used to, we ain't fuck with Harry Lee. Right, you right. You feel me? Like, like we didn't go over there. It wasn't that we don't fuck with Cross the River because they girls cross the river is what we used to creep by. You right. had them creeping, you feel me? Right. So, um, but you know, like the whole city of New Orleans, man, to me, now that I'm older, right. see back then you ain't, you ain't know no better. So you gonna rep where you from. And it was just an uptown thing. Right. You feel me? And, um. I think that's what it was, man. You feel me? But the whole New Orleans right now, to me, man, is 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 I, now that I can see is doing their thing. You know what I'm talking about? Tell me about this story. I was talking to Lil Yacht earlier because I did an interview and I was talking about Birdman, and we was talking about what's the difference. Y'all said it's a difference between stunning and floss. I told Yacht to me when I heard Juvenile song Floss the season in 1998 on so on Juvenile on Four Degrees. Baby, come on there, talk, saying, mentioning the word stunting, talking about TVs and the headrests and Benzes and Rolls Royces and all that, saying it's flossing season. So, y'all yeah, say there's a difference between stunting and flossing, but I feel like it's the, it's same, the same thing. thing. It's just, it just another word for it. That's what I say. I say it's just like yeah. flexing. Young kids right now say, man, I'm yeah. flexing all these niggas in the it, club. It's just another word for it, man. I mean, we was living it. Right. You know, and really that was Birdman thing, you feel me? Um, Birdman, he was a big time. Like, you notice, like, I didn't even get on a lot of stunting songs because I'm in the project, I'm in the hood, I'm in the trenches, so I I couldn't even rap. I, I literally remember Big Time was working on an album, and I will put a be on Millionaire's Dream and all that. Ooh, that was the shit. A lot of songs that lack on, I was supposed to be on, but I couldn't write no verse. I was blocked, you know what I'm saying? Writer's block. Lack was coming in that motherfucker, knocking them out. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I used to fumble a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people think that I just wasn't, um, or I was getting off of things, or they were taking me off of things. But, you know, me knowing what the business really was, you know what I'm saying? I, I was a lot of um, 
I was a cause of a lot of that, you know what I'm saying, not being involved. Like they never did exclude me out of nothing. So you take accountability this, for yeah, it? Yeah, 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 right. most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like we had this thing, man, look, if you fumble, somebody else gonna pick it up. At the time, Wayne was hungry. He wasn't fumbling, he wasn't getting high, he wasn't getting loaded, you know what I'm saying? And he was a studio junkie. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's all he wanted to do is rap, 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 rap. You feel me? And um, you know, we was in a studio and in the streets. You feel me? So it was like, you know, then we got into the drugs heavy, you know what I'm saying? I got into the drugs. I'ma speak for me. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know how that was, you know what I'm saying? It it, it sent us something me like I went, you know what I'm talking right. about? So how you feel about that? Like you said, when y'all I mean, one of my favorite songs too. Was that infrared dot on it? Yeah. Fucking on hot boys get out of here. Live. How did y'all come up with that? You know, I know Juve was on the hook, and y'all used to do that a lot. I, like, I see me do hooks. Wrote, I wrote that hook. Yeah, the hook was fire too. Juve killed me them. and um, one of my homeboys. We were the Booker T together, man. Shout out to Marvin. You feel me? Um, we were used to be in this lady called Tent while Mildred class. Everybody used to cut in her class. You know, I was going to Booker T at the time when I wrote that. I think I was in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And um, we used to go in now full of the pot and everything, man. Me and my dog Marvin beating on the desk. And um, I think Magnolia Chop. I think Magnolia Chop too. And we came up with that chorus, man. And I happened to go to the studio that day. And um, Juvenile was working on, I think, Soldier Rag. Nah. Yeah, he, I, nah, 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 that was on the Hot Boy. That was on the Hot Boy. Yeah, 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 that was sound on it, you know what I'm saying? And Juve at that time, man, he had the mm, Yeah. You know, he was a hook man. Yeah. So, you know, put him on the hook, made the song a whole lot, you know what I'm saying, better. Right, yeah, that was yeah. a hard ass song. Like, how many first, like you said, how was it? Cause like, I be telling a lot of artists now, it's like, even me and DVD talked about this, like it's elements, you don't always gotta have like a full raw underground bounce song sound that like you might hear in a whole in the water type club and all, but if you have those certain bounce elements in it, it's gonna make it hit. So like you might hear, all right, uh, woof, uh, just some a little, little shower. Shower Magnolia shower. Something like a little Magnolia yeah. shorty, a little sample in there, and you can make everything else, put music in there, and it's gonna be, a fire song, but they're gonna have the bounce elements, you know. So I tell them that's what how it was. I mean, not how um soldier, not soldier right on back to the ass up. Uh, I, I need a hot girl, girl. Yeah. like and you stole the show on that song, even yeah. though you and Wayne split y'all probably with four balls a piece. Of I stole it. You stole the I show so it. much that y'all did project, it. bitch. All the song, I stole that record, man. And to this day, bro, like it's, it's it's classic, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody can't take that away. Like when you hear that record, you waiting on. I need a project, bitch. I like them high. The one that, that part you waiting on it. To this day, Juvenile performed that song now, and he be like, "It's my favorite part." Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's 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 crazy though, man. Like we was on a tour bus, and baby, and they were like, "We need a a a, a song for the females." So man, Wayne, I'm full of the powder. You feel me? I'm in the front, and I'm just thinking like, what I really need, what I really like, mm -hmm. and that was at the time. That's what it was. You feel me? And I just wrote that shit. I wasn't expecting that. You like, like when you write songs, you're not knowing, oh, this gonna be the hit. This gonna be a classic. This gonna be, you know what I'm saying? But that just, it just was for me. It was set up for me to steal it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You definitely I did stole, that, you feel me? You definitely stole the show. Why I was stunned so much in Portland? Cause I feel like that's what helped y'all. Like you and BG bought the gangsta gangsta shit to this yeah. shit. Wayne was the, you know, you and Wayne was the one with the girls like too, but you and BG was more raw. Y'all yeah. both using drugs hard drugs at a yeah. young age and then you got juvenile being a storyteller man at first got a funny personality giving doing great skits all and baby happened. bringing a stunt shit so it's like all this in one gumbo pot Fact. it's like it was just destined to be just what it was whatever and that's why i think y'all resonated with the world so much because you know no limit had the suits and it was doing with the Versace, but I remember you said that and I asked Baz that. I was like, Cash Money had the real look of the city because y'all wanted t-shirts. Y'all yeah. looked like dudes off the block. But y'all beats and y'all swagger influenced not just New Orleans, but the world. Detroit, Harlem, the dudes, Camden, everybody talk the about y'all. The world, Craig. Yeah. The world, like he said on Friday. So why you feel like that shiny stuff 
was so important and you really seen like, damn, people really like doing the donuts. I don't like think that. it really just was the shining. I just think it was the whole lifestyle period. You know what I'm saying? You had some people shining, some people grinding, some people robbing, some people killing. So we just gave them everything. All right. the element, like you say, it was gumbo. You Dumb. feel me? And then we had them fire ass man and tracks, man. And like, the skits too, bro. You know what I'm saying? And the skits. Shout out to Ziggy, man, you know. Yeah, yeah man. Like like we just had it, bro. Like, and I don't think it'll never ever be another like like group like how we did, dog. Like right. it can't be did. It can't be duplicated. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it ain't gonna happen. Dog, even when y'all used to be one like I be telling dudes like even when I look at like we on fire, y'all got y'all shirts off. It's hot in New Orleans. Like baby said, the wall sweat. So when I see rappers from New Orleans, always got on like big old coats and all that stuff like that. When it ain't that hot like that, I mean cold like that. Yeah. Y'all represented what it really was. Like yeah, even Juve on, on hot. On he high. got the fucking water bottle porno. Yeah. So I'm like, y'all really brought people to the South. It wasn't no New York. It's not feeling. It's not kind. No, no disrespect. None of them. I love all of what they do, but I feel like y'all brought them to our world. And when we looked at movies like Boys in the Hood, Men in Society, we got the, a glimpse into this shit. Right. So when we saw y'all videos, y'all brought people to New Orleans. Right. And we loved that. Even when y'all had the chains at the end of Juve, now, how video is like, yeah, cash money really on now. Y'all yeah. walking through the crowd on um, back to that, so baby got his arm around y'all. We on the box, yeah, watching y'all. Now, I want to say this too you was like a, a big star in the border blocking movie, you know. Right. And um, that, was, that was my intention. Tiki Hand let it up, like, you know, pass checks out on time. You did that, but I like the part when you told baby at the Rolex that you jacked from somebody. Yeah. And he said, Bitch, let me see. Explain to her why people didn't want to say what's happening, bitch, or what's up. Because people be like, That's so disrespectful. But explain that. What people mean when they say what's up, bitch, because that's a greeting to us. But it's to it's, us, it's how you say it. It's the energy behind it. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't heard a lot of people outside, even in Memphis, uh, Florida, you know what I'm saying? And they talk like that as well. You feel me? Because of y'all? Yeah. Yeah, we, we influence the world to do that, but it's not disrespectful. It's how you say it. You know, females do it all the time. Everybody got an inside way of how they talk or play with their homeboy or their homegirl, you feel me? Right. And that's just what it is. Now, uh, it can't be no regular Joe Blow coming like, man, you a bitch ass nigga. You know, then it, you'll see the difference, you feel me? You might walk in, man, you know, what's up, bitch? You right. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's different how you saying it. We're right. greeting each other, you feel me? Right, right. Yeah, it ain't no disrespect behind it. And, and being from New Orleans, we know when it's disrespectful, how it's being said. Deliver, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah, me? yeah, yeah. The tone of it. Yeah. Now, what BG was saying, in my city is a struggle, you hustle to live large, you step or get stepped on. Times is hard, shit, get real, hey, get bust, blood, spill. Yeah. Then you got Juvenile saying on Soldier Rag, on. What he said, um, not a boss drew a cross, not, not a nigga drew a boss and a cross needed a nigga stepped on. Mm -hmm. So he hired five killers that snorted the hair on. Oh, and that's how it be happening. And there's a lot of other songs that BG said on y'all saying on. People in Baton Rouge got popular with saying step and their Kodak saying he a big stepper. And I know the guy made the song a long time ago, murder a hot stepper. But I'm like, in Jamaica, when they say hot stepper, they mean like uh, an outlaw, but when they say shot up, that's how we miss step up. Yeah. You know, so explain to people like they probably don't know, because I even know they got to step out of the Magnolia too, but yeah, why yeah. people in New Orleans, BG was saying that when people really was like, damn, New Orleans been like just influencing shit, because they've been saying niggas getting stepped on, yeah. killed or whatever. Yeah. Bro, you know, I think we influenced a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? Even me with the Young Thugger. Right. Young Thug up. Uh, you know, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Free Young Thug too, man. You know, um, I just think that New Orleans and the hot boys and the big timers just influenced the world, bro. Right. Like everybody grabbed a little piece from somewhere and they do it to this day. You know what I'm saying? You listen to a whole bunch of the rappers, the new rappers, the older rappers, you know what I'm saying? You're going to hear them taking a piece from somewhere from, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know why it's like that, bro. I just feel like God put us in that position to be that. You know what I'm saying? Just to be these legends that we are, bro. Why was it so important for y'all to rep the South so hard? Because I feel like today, a little bit by by it's been so long since New Orleans been on top. Like when y'all was dominating the No Limit, you know, and, and rest in peace, Slim. I feel like his movement was about to be on a whole nother level with Cutthroat Committee. But unfortunately, you know, Slim, you know, that happened to Soldier and stuff like that. But why you feel like? It was so important to represent that down south shit because I feel like by a lot of dudes taking this East Coast shit, everybody running with Chicago wave because it's hot right now. I feel like we lose a lot of identity, and I feel like what made y'all so good is because y'all 
was so New Orleans and so Southern with the gold teeth and all that shit. That's you took the gold out. That, yeah, 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 man. You know, Airpire White, man. Dr. <laughs> Price, man. You already know. You I got money too, right, nigga. Man. You did. I got money now, nigga. But yeah, man, I just, um, I don't know, bro. I, I mean, we, we, we just different, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like we was just giving people us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't know and we didn't see nothing else. Mm. So if you don't see nothing else, this all you know. And we just happened to, you know what I'm saying, just put that out. You know what I'm saying? Coach, yeah. And that's what people got. And like I say, we didn't know that it was going to take off the way it took off. I remember we went to the tunnel, man. They was like, wasn't interested in us the first time we went. They were looking at us like, man, you country ass nigga. You feel me? That's how they look at us. At Say that again, Turk, because a lot of people don't think people call us country. Oh, yeah, we in, country in the motherfucker, for, especially them niggas on the East Coast. Yeah. You know, but when they, it was the Soul Train Award, we went down and. You know, oh, we got we the t shirts on, all the t shirts. Yeah, they got the pictures floating around, right, you know right. what I'm saying? And, we was stuck and we ain't had no suits. Why ain't say we ain't got on no suits because we, we ain't trying, trying to be president. president. You know, like, we wasn't wearing that shit. You feel me? We was straight t shirts, Jabos, and Reeboks. You know what I'm saying? Even though Magnolia Slim is the really originator of the soldier Reeboks and, and the camouflage soldier Bandai, yeah. and the Jabos with the pocket. Like, Mac, that come from Magnolia Slim. Influence was You know what I'm saying? Come from Tell. Magnolia Slim. Magnolia Slim. I don't think just had the team around him to, you know, push his brand and the things that he was branding at the time. Right. Magnolia Slim was in the streets. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that was my dog. I looked up to him, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's my homie. But, um, man, we, we, we when, when, when Magnolia died, man, we took a major loss. Yeah. You know, that was our down south Tupac. Everybody always said, you know what I'm saying? He even said it too, I was, I, mean, I, was, I, was, I was actually signed to a record label with Magnolia Slim when I was young. Me, Levy, you know what I'm saying? And one of my homeboy, Leonard, you know what I'm saying? Leonard wound up playing football and stuff. What's that? Was um, that hype enough? Or hype enough. Hype enough. With, okay. with Chill Will. Chill Will had like all hype around enough. Six Shot, SBOGT, Click, you know what I'm saying? Me, Magnolia, Shorty, he had all of us. Mm. Chill Will did. Chill Will, yeah. But what Chill Will didn't have, he didn't have the bag. Mm. You see what I'm saying? If Chill Will would have had that bag. Yeah, the vision though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he had everybody. You know, like Uptown is hip hop to me. You mm -hmm. feel me? Uptown was hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we like pushed it out there. <clears throat> People gotta understand. P, shout out to P, you know what I'm saying? He did his thing, but P didn't do it from New Orleans. P did it in California and came back and snatched people up from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But we actually like got it from here and took it up there and over here and over there you know what i'm saying right. and that's the difference man i feel like you know if if we was to come back for this reunion tour mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i feel like it'll open up doors and and make the light be on the city again you right. feel me because it's a lot of talent down there you know it's a lot of talent and I don't think there's no crabs in the bucket. I just think niggas in the hot water and niggas not trying to pull a crab out the hot water. You feel right. me? And that's all a nigga need. Somebody to pull them out the hot water instead of thinking the crab in the bucket. We just pulling each other down. Right. Pull a nigga up. You feel me? And, you know, that was my whole reason to even like reaching out and, you know, doing this interview today with you because I feel like you gonna bridge the gap. You're gonna be one of the ones to bridge the gap that we need, you know, and hopefully the people that's out there that's listening to this, man, can see me and, you know, reach out, man. I know a lot of people might be like, man, Turk be this, 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 that. Nah, man, I'm just, I'm, I, I don't wanna deal with negative energy, you feel me? So anything right. remind me of my past, I'm in my present and the future's a mystery, you feel right. me? I don't have time for it. Right. But if you trying to get out that hot water, I'm going to reach down and pick you up because I don't got that crab in the bucket, man. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate you for doing that, bro. Because like you told me on live, you was like, man, I can tell you a student in this shit. I can tell you really love what you do. Yeah. And I can tell you peer because I wouldn't be fucking with you if you Thanks. wasn't. And that ain't even mad if I was from the east or uptown or wherever. You was like, man, I real recognize right. really That don't me. matter, bro. Yeah. And I think that the, 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 the differences like that, east, New Orleans, downtown, right. man, we New Orleans. Right. You know what I'm saying? Five the blank period, yeah. You feel me? And once people start seeing that, the stop measuring, stop comparing, stop competing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And let's 
Like Atlanta, Sitting everybody they, like fuck with each other. I much. live in Atlanta. A lot of them dudes don't like each other personally, right. but the outside world see them work together. Right. And that's how I gotta be. If you don't like me, bro, like, like you don't gotta like me, just respect me. You feel exactly. me? We gonna have respect for each other. I'm gonna respect the fact that, man, you a major player in the movement of what we got going on. Let's put it together and build a mastermind group. And I'm not trying to come open Christmas presents with you, you feel me? But I'm going to respect you and we're going to keep it pushing, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And I think we need more energy like out there, like that, because it's the younger generation that's really looking up to the OGs and we don't have no unity. They're like, shit, well, how y'all going to tell me this and how y'all going to tell me that, you feel me? So that's why, bro, I'm taking a, a step. Accountability. You know what I'm saying? Holding myself accountable first, you know what I'm saying? And trying to be an example and show exemplary behavior on how to do it right. You feel me? Yeah, because I know a lot of people always say, man, if Cash Money No Limit would have been able to like work together, even though I know they had street things that was going on that the people that know and the music fans didn't know that it was bigger, but they knew that maybe we probably would have been on top because we were set up. Because, you know, looking at Atlanta, I remember Goody Ma was like, man, when Pastor Troy had this Master P, you know, on that song, we read it, but I ain't no more playing GA. You know, Goody Ma said, we gonna let you come up on the stage with us even though the radio don't want you to come, cause P up here, we gonna ride with Atlanta. You know, but we'll go against each other when they stuck together. Even though they was like, man, New Orleans been killing it way before Outkast, Gucci and Jesus came later. Everybody got their time, and now is the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? From 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 this, this day forward. This day forward is the time, man. I believe in manifestation. Speaking into existence, you know what I'm saying? BG free, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, man. That's what we gonna speak, and it gonna happen real soon. And y'all stay tuned for that, man. So I'm gonna speak the same energy on my city, man. You know what I'm saying? That we gonna come together, and mm -hmm. we gonna unite, and we gonna reunite, right. and we gonna make this shit do what it do. And we not really tripping on anything and everybody that's not for it. You feel right. me? Another thing I wanna say too, Turk. What do you feel? I mean. Being from uptown, what's one of your favorite rappers from downtown that you probably I like? I like um, L.O.G. Okay, ooh. You know what I'm saying? I like L.O.G. And Bang was told him if you like Phil. Yeah, I like L.O.G. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, that Wolf Bang was the shit. Yeah. Um, now, I remember one time on Rap City Turk, you was pretty high on this one or whatever, and Wayne was shouting out uh, the squad at the end. Yeah. And it was at the end, it was going on. And, and Baby, I guess they told him, Tigger, whoever said, give all y'all shout outs. And Wayne said, I want to shout out the whole squid eye. And Baby and BG looked at each other like, man, what the hell? And BG kind of like hit Wayne head off. Yeah. And I, I don't, and I was talking to this about somebody on the podcast. I was like, if Wayne was doing what he was doing with Nicki and Drake, later we see how big he did with Young Money. But when I think about the squad, because even before y'all, you know, it was you and LV, and then y'all came and Baby kind of, I guess you was what you learned from them to do it with y'all. Yeah. If you would've kind of did that with the squad, but I always felt like Baby didn't do that. He didn't want to get behind that vision because they was from the East. But I the don't squad think, was hot. I don't, I don't think, that was Wayne oh. Homeboys, and well, they wasn't rappers, bro. Like, to be real, let's get it right. Mario, Sammy. Okay. That was like Wayne Homeboys. Right. Even though that kid was a rapper, like Wayne. And this, yeah. Them niggas just formed. I think, I think the squad was formed out of necessity, like, Man, the hot boy's gone and Wayne on the one that carried money. So Wayne clicked, fuck it, well, let's rap. Uh, they probably been wanted to rap and right. never showed it, but now it was their moment to do it and they did it well. I think I was locked up when the squad was doing what they yeah, were doing. They missed it. The reason I'm saying that, too, because, all right, look at it like Dipset, because that's what I was saying. I was telling my brothers, too. When, if Jay Z would have said, I don't want Cam Ryan them on the label, they're not from Brooklyn, they're from Harlem. I don't want to sign him. I'm not signing off on him. Think about how the game would have been if we wouldn't have been able to get Dipset. So if Wayne said when he saw the squad, I mean, he saw Dipset and Nelly and the Lunatics, he's like, look, I want to do this with my friends, do some mixtapes. We dressing a little different because I'm around them or whatever. I'm going to bring this flavor. But I guess if they was from Uptown, Baby probably would have been. But I, I don't, I, that's nah, what I they wasn't, them. They wasn't rappers. So he when you did see him start buzzing. He could have been like, you know, like what, what y'all said, what we see. Mm -hmm. It's not like that, you right. feel me? Because even me, I'm like, I still don't look at them like they was rappers because right. I know them in a different light. Right, right. But they was really like spitting that yeah. shit, you feel me? You can't take nothing away. Right. And um, 
it could have been that dog. Like like what y'all see, we probably didn't see it. He probably didn't see. Right, because I think you like you, you know said, like the big brother is like the little brother grew up now. Whatever, it's like all right, yeah, I was you was the man then. Yeah. But it's like we coming now, and it's like y'all don't really see what we doing. Yeah. So I feel like it was different because they were rapping on other people's beats. What Wayne did was legendary because they did have a lot of fans. I just wonder if he probably would have like got behind that. Wayne idea. just we Wayne did what he want wanted to do, did what he had to do. And I don't even believe baby believed in it. No, nah, he didn't. Just, and it just happened. Right, right. Wayne just it happened. It was his time. It was his moment. Right. And it worked. You know what I'm saying? Like he went against. Bro, I remember we used to all wear Reeboks and Jabos and all that. Wayne used to wear the book pack backpack with the with the Tim. Mm -hmm. And baby used to get mad. You know what I'm saying? Like Thanks, he didn't like Santa. Wayne. Wayne always looked up to Jay Z. Like that always. He went was, iceberg. You know what iceberg. Like, the ice, and then he wind up getting an endorsement with Iceberg. They used to bring him all the Iceberg clothes to the to the um to the concerts and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he dressed like East Coast, like that's what he was on. Mm -hmm. And I think he really, really liked like um Jay Z to the point where you know what I'm saying. He just turned into him, mm -hmm. so sort of. You right. know what I'm saying? Until he found his own style. That yeah, was really and, and, and kind of like you know his word play. Like he'll tell you like. You know, we come in simple shit, but the streets in the hood relate to it. Right. A lot of people couldn't relate to Wayne at the he time. Going you know what I'm saying? Because he'll say some shit and you'd be like, what the fuck? Right. To this day, he say some shit and I'd be like, God damn. Then I'd be like, oh, that shit makes sense. Right. You got to be a, 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 a bookworm to understand what Wayne's saying. Right. Because it's wordplay. It's like even today, like he, he it's no, double it ain't such, it's just wordplay. Yeah. You feel me? Like he smart with that shit. Yeah, man. double the time. You know what I'm saying? But at the same metaphors. time, you know, people love, and and I didn't understand. Like people used to be saying, "Man, you were better than Lil Wayne when y'all were young." Did it out. But I never felt like that because I felt like I was the weaker link because they used to really be rappers. I was one that just came and just happened to just inherit, but then. When I got locked up and I started traveling and I'm seeing, you know, I could get to my fans now on social media is different. So now I'm just not in New Orleans. Right. I'm all over the world. And I'm like, damn, they really fucking nah, me. Nah, Turkey you know was wrong. Like you but I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't understand was. that until I really started connecting with my fans on social media. You see what I'm saying? See, if I be honest, though, like Wayne, Wayne was doing his thing and all that. But like I said, Wayne couldn't really curse a lot, but this shit was still hard. You and BG, shit was really, really raw. And Juve just was his own monster, the way he harmonized. Yeah, and the storytelling and the, the, the big body bands, huh? And then, uh, yeah, um, working with some ads, yeah, the bands, yeah. Like, how niggas was saying, yeah, with the, yeah, Juve was yeah. saying, yeah, 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 all that stuff. That's how we talk. Yeah. But I was just going back to this too, because when you were talking about how Wayne was dressed with the Tims and all that, I was saying, I know Wayne real close with my family, yeah, Fat, yeah, Fear and Ron yeah. Reddit. So I do feel like that was their whole little things. Like I currently like to dress different. And that was what he was doing because Wayne was in the East a lot. Yeah. And Wayne with the Abe and BG with the Abe. So I'd be like, people don't really, you know, just like if Wayne was influenced by Dipset or Jay-Z earlier, or being around getting him, he was influenced by everything he was around. He picked up something from it. So I do feel like his influence from being around the East, he got from it, being around y'all, Uptown, and everybody influenced him. But people be like, oh, man, he wasn't. He didn't get no sway from being around the East. The man was around fat yeah. and all them a lot. And, and Gutter and Maury, that was his friends. That's where it come from, the East and the East Coast. Thank you. From New Orleans East and the East Coast, y'all heard Turk say, Turk, when you was getting, when you said when you was young, drugging, because I have a friend from Baltimore, mm -hmm. and you know, they got a lot of heroin out there, whatever, but when he heard you on Drink Champ saying that you was getting loaded, like, 14, 15, he's like, man, what the hell? How can he be getting it? I'm like, dog, New Orleans is just different. Yeah. The murder rate, the drugs, the, the fucking mass incarcerate. We got more people get locked up in New Orleans. They didn't want to plan it. But we still got the highest murder rate. Yeah. So that's not stopping nothing. Plus, we got a hard drug, heroin, and thank God you clean now. Yeah. But they're using these pills now, fitting off. How do you feel about when you was on it being clean and what you think about people that's dying all the overdose or Percocets and fitting all that stuff today? Man, I, I think it's a, um, a pandemic again, you know what I'm saying? And we have to wisen up, man, because, you know, it's a population control thing that's going on. That's what I believe, you know? And um, it got to come from somewhere, you feel me? Where you think it's coming from, you know? And all these people, like, especially my color, you know, and I don't want to make this no race thing, but um, the, 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 I'm not gonna say her name, but the lady that just passed from Memphis, her daddy, you know, is who he is. They say she passed from cardiac arrest. 
but they didn't mention no drugs involved. All the uh, the black folks been dying cardiac arrest. Are oh, they on the fentanyl? Fentanyl. Come on, everybody know that. Priscilla, fuck it. Priscilla, you know, fuck with that fentanyl too. Her daddy died on the toilet. You know what I'm saying? Like, call it what it is, man. I just think it's a it's a um a fucked up situation that we in, and we all gotta watch. You know where we getting drugs from, bro. If it ain't prescribed from you, you know what I'm saying? It could be deadly. You know, um, fentanyl is a hundred times more than morphine, 50 times stronger than heroin. You know, so when you don't know what you're getting and what you're intaking when you're self-medicating, you know what I'm saying? You really taking a chance. I took chances. So I'm kind of like glad that I'm not in that situation no more, you feel me? But the people that are, you know, just be more mindful of you don't know. And every time you really, really taking a chance, you feel me? Right. How did you, you get addicted change? to like heroin, you know, just because you clean, now you've been clean for years. I, bro, I, I, I started at a DJ. I started snorting cocaine with one of my cousins. We were at a DJ. And um, one is not enough. A thousand is too many. One is not enough. That's how they said, you know, I liked how that drain made me feel. And you know what I'm saying? And, how it numbed me up and how it made me feel when I came out. You know, you feel like Superman, you feel untouchable, you feel, you know. And um, I started speedballing, you feel me? I didn't never like doing weed. And I love how it made me feel, the one and one feel good. Like, it's like, it, 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 when you stressed out, you know what I'm saying? You got so much shit going on, you know, it's a, it got a lot to do with mental health as well, you feel me? You just wanna, block out everything you feel me and growing up in poverty and stuff like that man and and you know a one parent household and a lot of stress and shit on you you feel me you want to just get away and when you find something that make you get away you fall in love with it and that's what i did man i, I fell in love with heroin and cocaine and um i used to want to not do that shit. you feel me but i used to really want to do this shit, you know what i'm saying and it took me to OD twice, you know what I'm saying? And um, I prayed, man, after the second time, and I was like, man, God, I don't know why I'm gonna stop if it life threatened me. Three days later, after that, SWAT team kicked in my door. I thought I was being robbed, I had to shoot out with the police, you know what I'm saying? And um, 52 shots, man, God spared my life. I didn't get hit or graves, you know, wind up going to prison at 22 years old. Did eight year, eight months, sixteen days. Got out on appeal. Gave him twelve years back. Mm. I had twenty two years at twenty two. Wow. In terms, what was the what was the hardest thing? I got a brother that's doing life in that goal. Well, he's not in that goal no more than moving the hunts. But he told me to ask you, what is the hardest day to you? The first day you think or the last day? Um, I mean, it's never the last day you're in that motherfucker because right. you're so anticipating the first day because you don't know what to expect. You know right. what I'm saying? And any nigga that say. They wasn't scared when they first went to penitentiary, man. They lied, you know. And um, when I first got off that bus, man, I seen niggas, man. And you just, you in a foreign world, you feel me? Little bit of nigga, you seen these big ass, buff ass niggas lifting weights and they looking at you and all this shit, you know what I'm saying? And um, you just basically like, you, you, you feel the unknown, you know what I'm saying? But then when you walk in, Man, what's up, Turkey? You see, and now you in a comfortable you. situation. They embrace you, you know what I'm saying? It's different. Now, I didn't been in the state and the feds. In the state, I was administrative, you know what I'm saying? I was a security threat, so they had me in a penitentiary part. Everywhere I went, I had to have a, a DRT member walking with me, you know what I'm saying? And it was a limited amount of people. And what is the DRT for that don't know that? Shit, I don't even know what the motherfucker but it's something stand had, right, for, right. but it's like a, a little squad, a squad okay, that's team what I want to know, yeah. in jail. Right. You know what I'm saying? They different from the regular officers, you right. feel so me? Want to make sure people um, know. I knew what it mean at the time, but I don't know what the fucking not, I don't know letters mean no more. No, I wouldn't say letter I want just know yeah, which yeah, they, they do enforcers. When you see them motherfuckers come through in that black, you're going to get right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. When them yeah. bitches come, man, they you done buck the regular COs. You know what I'm saying? Get out the way. That's like the that's like the feds. Okay. Like the feds coming in jail. You feel me? Like you respect them more. You get out their way. Okay. You feel me? And how was that too? Like I said, being in prison. You from New Orleans? We don't have gangs that I knew. Like I said, on on the east bank of the river, we didn't have none. 
Oh, how was that being there with like Vice Lord, probably GDs and all that Tennessee? That, like, that, that? that shit was, it was different, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I had a fight with two Crip, Crip niggas my whole time in jail. I had two fights, you know. Um, one dude, man, somebody sent him out. You know, I used to be on the phone a lot. So I'm on the phone and um, I used to be making phone calls for niggas. I'm burning that motherfucker. My <laughs> girl, you know, keeping money on the phone. I'm How so good. Day, every, I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm knowing I'm, I'm out of town. I'm knowing I gotta control this pod. I gotta control it. I can't be on no rah rah shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nigga talking about them rah rah shit, they flawed you. You got to think smart. It's about survival. So I'm in there, you know, so I'm making phone calls for nigga pop pop pop, but I'm not gonna make too many because a nigga will think you a hoe too. You feel me? So this particular time, I called the nigga girl for him while he was locked down. You know what I'm saying? And one dude, I didn't use, use the phone that time and call for him. Kind of, he was running a pub. He was an old head, locked down for for you know he had life, you know. And um, he got in the little young nigga head and shit. So bam, I'm in the shower. You know, I come out. I'm feeling the nigga watching me. My cell was like right by the phone. Like you had to cross a yellow line to get by my get in my cell. I think I it was cell twelve. You know what I'm saying? So bam, I'm walking. Bam, I get in there. I'm putting my baby oil and shit on, you know what I'm saying? And they have some coffee on the thing that's hot. My celly got some coffee. So my celly are crip too though, but they different kind of crips, but they both crips. So bad, nigga coming now. And I just, I look up and nigga just stand. He like, man, blah, blah, blah. So nigga then told him, I try to holler at his girl all the while, bro. I signed an autograph for your girl for you, nigga. My bitch bad, man. Well, that's a booger bat in my mind, you know what I'm saying? But you know, nigga have a reason to let shit out, you feel me? So bam, nigga talking, you know what I'm saying? And it just got aggressive right from out of his mouth. And I just hit him, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? He hit me, pop, pop, pop. Now I'm hitting that boy, that boy Duck City. I'm hitting him, pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? I and he kind of like grabbed my head. I grabbed a coffee. I hit that boy with the coffee. Bam. Now, I don't do no soldier boy. Don't soldier boy me with these little demonstrations. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I hit him with the coffee. Bam. You feel me? And um, they broke it up. You feel me? Because, like I said, you can't really fight too long. But I, I fucked over him, dog. You know? And um, the DRT came. You know, they found gang literature and his shit. Locked him up. They automatically want you to kind of like go through litigation and all that shit, but I didn't press charge on them or none of that. You know what I'm saying? They just separated us. And um, that was that little situation. But yeah, you're gonna have problems, man. And you have to like deal with it. You feel me? And if you don't, that shit gonna travel. And now everybody taking your commissary, doing it, doing that. You know, even though I was on 23 and one, some of the times I also was on like, 20 and 4 and well you probably have this side come out and this side come out by me being hot boy turk they put me in a high risk unit right. you know what i'm saying so i wasn't in regular population in the state but when i got to the feds i'm around everybody right. you know what i'm saying and that's when i got off the bus in the feds it was like everybody embraced me you got cars and shit like you got louisiana car you got the tennessee car you know what i'm saying you got Wherever your state, Smart. all them roll again. DC, because they're not state, they just yeah. buy itself DC. So yeah, city. yeah, I, I met a lot of people, man, and soon I got off the bus and seen them. It was like smooth, you feel me? And um, we was in the phase cool. at what um, state you was in the phase? In Forest City. Okay. Yeah. Now, Turk, since we're on the phase, whatever, even like I was looking at the stuff you was talking about with gangsters, like you said, how people pick and choose how they want to do it, when they want to do it. Now, T.I. said the stuff about his cousin that he took the charge with and, yeah. and Keefe D. said he put the charge on his nephew and, you know, with Tupac or whatever. But, and Gangsta said he did what he did to get out of jail. Now, Boosie said he didn't really care for Gangsta or whatever for what he did, but T.I. said he told on his dead cousin. Yeah. And T.I. and Boosie doing the album together. Do you feel like it's fair that Boosie, like, Doing that, like, is there nah, like man, bias? I guess. Not, hell nah. This is the only. Yeah, I mean, the same energy you feel about a situation. Got to be across the board. Be, it got to be the same across energy. The board. You know what I'm saying? And you know that's why me, bro. Like, I, I kind of like <laughs> stay out the way of that shit. You know, snitching is snitching, man. No matter what, you could dry snitch. Um, you could snitch straight out. They say it ain't telling if you're told. That's how they live it now. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. But you know. If you're gonna have that energy and you're gonna, I feel like if you're gonna verse your opinion about something, you got to stand on that energy, you know what I'm saying? 
Like, you know, and that's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but, um, it's, it is a lot of um, different strokes for different folks. And when it comes to the music business, you know, like I feel like a, a nigga could say you a snitch and niggas that have some energy. Like niggas call me a snitch. You know, nigga, what a paperwork. You feel me? A nigga could say anything and now you will have niggas doing this. Like nigga, nigga, let somebody come forward who had, who got convicted. You feel me? In my situation, I wound up going to jail. There was like, before I caught this case, the bigger case, you know what I'm saying? And the police was kind of watching a nigga set where I went scold dope from, you know what I'm saying? I scold my dope, bam, we about to go. I get on the motherfucking, um, on, on Claiborne, Claiborne and I think Martin Luther King or whatever, I'm about to get on the bridge. Police, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying, pull me over. So bam, I got a syringe and a spoon. I don't really got my 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 hit. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Bam. They bring us down. They come out with a bag of rocks and a fucking gun. You know what I'm saying? The two other niggas I'm in there with, I'm like, I'm looking at them like, so now I'm thinking the police been plant shit on us. So we get in Templeman, it's them niggas, is the other nigga crack and the other nigga gun. I'm on probation. Them niggas don't got no probation or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So now, they on the street, they done bond out. Me and the nigga who they locked up, the nigga who was dope spot, he get locked up, I get locked up, they got him over here, they got me over there, we in two different places, you feel me? So of course you like, man, something, something ain't right, something ain't right. Them niggas on the street don't got no lawyers, you feel me? So every time we go to court, we getting set off because them niggas don't got no lawyer, we on the same case. We had... All of us had, we had four lawyers, I believe. Uh, they had the same lawyer, we had three lawyers. And this one, Jason Williams was a lawyer. He was on the case, you feel me? He did the district yeah. attorney right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we wind up going to trial and we wind up beating the trial. So the nigga, I try to get the nigga on my podcast, you feel me? I ain't even be talking about this shit, got no niggas clout chase. And the crazy thing is, nigga try to put bad low out on my name, you feel me? Cause I'm trying to bring him on my podcast and tell a nigga, Nigga, I still feel some type of way because you ain't took your charge, nigga, 20 some year later. You feel me? I'm just going to tell him like a man, like it ain't no problem, but uh, nigga, this how I felt because I'm sitting on another nigga charge and you could have came and got your shit and been on probation, but you, nigga, if I would have got, we would have got found guilty, nigga, I was going to do 10 on your shit. Because you're janking, you I feel me? I'm fucked up on red. I had a heroin charge, you know what I'm saying? So we just were going to pull it for content. The nigga flipped out and tried to lie on me. Really want to be in a nigga position, dog. You feel me? And that's why all the fucking rumors came from. And me being a nigga that I am, I'm knowing I'm solid. Real nigga, street niggas who street nigga know I'm solid. So I never spoke about it. You know what I'm saying? But some things, bro, you be having to address in the way you address it without putting light on a nigga who trying to use you. Like niggas that act like they got an issue with you and tell somebody else. But they really don't got an issue with you, you know what I'm saying? They just love the attention that they getting when they talk about you to somebody else. You feel me? Because they can't get the attention from you. And that's what these niggas be doing. It's a lot of clown, foo-foo, clout chasing, you know what I'm saying? But now they're the ass-ass niggas out there, man, you feel me? And I just tell the truth and don't hate, bro. Telling the truth, not hating, you feel me? And a lot of niggas can't take the truth, you man, know? You definitely made that pop. Like, when you say that telling the truth, not hating, that shit really real. And even your truth, what you talking about, like I said, back with the, the hair on and using that. Cause I remember, like I said, BG was on, you know, a 15, I think he said, strung out dope feet on, I need a bag of fur yeah. with UNLV, a UNL, a part of the crown would give me some hair on. Yeah. And, and baby said, I need a bag of dope. Like this shit, like that joke going jack for that silver pack. Like yeah. people don't understand this shit really was everywhere. That shit was like a fashion statement, dog, in New Orleans. It was like how niggas, Popping perks and shit right now. Right. How niggas like don't don't like you are really a, a rich junkie. We was rich junkies back then. New York niggas like, what y'all looking for? Dope. Yeah, dope, like, dope, it was, dope it was, yeah, they thought dope was weed. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, it's all the same. All that shit really the same. Even right. the weed that nigga smoking is laced up. You know what I'm saying? All that shit is self medication, man. You feel me? And you know. Everybody fucking around, you feel me? Like, it is what it is, bro. Like, we got, like I said, it's, we got a lot of mental health problems, bro. We come through trauma. And a lot of us is 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 suffering in silence, you feel me? And that's our way we cope with it to, to deal with the world. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's another way around it, dog. And it's about, you know, using your mind to get where you need to go, bro. You feel me? 
thinking of the things you want in your life. You feel me? You feel bad because the thoughts that you have, you know, just like you can feel bad from the thoughts, you can feel good from the thoughts, but a lot of people don't control their own thinking, you know? And I think that's what's going on. So, you know, my whole, my whole thing and my whole reason of why I do things is to be an example to the younger generation and the people that want to listen, you feel me? But I have a duty to show exemplary behavior how, you know, a nigga supposed to do it right. right. So everything I went through, dog, I, I just, you know, a lot of people might get offended from the truth, but you know, I can't tell a lie because I can't remember. Right. See now, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, like you say, what it is. Always still right. What I'm about to say, um, Tur, answer this too, because you know a lot of people when you went to prison all those years and you was, I guess, in Tennessee or in the feds, they was like, man, Turk lost his accent. You know what I mean? They have anybody tell you about how you lost your accent or what they were saying? What you we had to say about the that? habits, dog, and it ain't like we adapt to our environment. Right. Anybody that be somewhere for a long time, if you be in China, you're gonna probably come back talking Chinese. You feel me? That's just life. I hate the fact that I don't talk like New Orleans to New Orleans people, right. but to other people, I still do. It feel like, it, it feel like it's coming back. Cause like when, when you first got out, I kind of did hit. But like you said, you was yeah. around there so long, so you was probably- it's Yeah, you gonna, just, you gonna pick it up. Yeah. It ain't, you, you don't try to lose your accent. Right, it just happens. You don't even be knowing it. It's like you're in the sun, nigga. You don't try to get black if you like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you adapt, to, we adapt, to, we creatures of habit. Right. So we adapt to our environment and life is repetition. So anything you repetitiously around, it becomes your life. You know what I'm saying? Anything you repetitiously doing, it become your habit. Your habit become your life. You feel me? So that's just how God made it. How was it when y'all was on tour with Rough Riders and all that being from New Orleans and just like the way New York dudes probably was like, man, these dudes from the South, man, DMX and them like, man, who these niggas here? They just taking over the show. They got fucking shit all on the stage. Nah, they, they, they wasn't like that because it was like, in the South, it was us. Mm -hmm. Up North, it was them. Right. So they opened up for us, we opened up for them. It was an even swap. You know what I'm saying? They was hot and we was hot. And it just was a perfect marketing and promotion that they put together. It was brilliant with that. You know what I'm talking about? Turk, I ain't gonna lie. Jay-Z, like my favorite rapper, him and Tupac. But I really feel like, and I and I love the song he did on Jewish shit, that high remix. Yeah. But I feel like that's one of Jay-Z words verses. But when he said that, 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 I'm Jay -Z, like, Jay-Z. Keep it real, Turk. I believe Jay-Z was for, that's why we did the remix, because we didn't like it. We were like, man. All right. That's why we did it. Yeah, that shit was fire. We got this yeah. thing locked, huh? Yeah. Cash money can't be stopped, huh? Yeah. Them hot boys, boys too hot, huh? Yeah. And you like my Rolex watch, huh? Yeah. And the way we hit the block, huh? And yeah. camouflage yeah. with Glocks, huh? Yeah. And you like the way we stun, huh? You smoke them blunts, yeah. huh? You, you love, love the white front, 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 get you right man yeah, yeah. that look good but like yeah. i said i'm glad you said that because i thought i was tripping and i remember we started a whole that's that's something that new york don't feel like jay-z ever had a bad verse and that's one and i could be honest i'm glad y'all did that yeah. because that was the one that i like the most Fair. besides the original one um why bounce music so important to new orleans because a lot of times people are like all right free to do bounce no uh, gay dude when they all see somebody gay doing which is nothing wrong or whatever with that the guys would be like they don't want to do it. And P. Tom Mo said, so the slip said, man, you got to stop doing that because they're going to look at you a certain way. So stop messing with the bounce or whatever. Why you feel like it's wrong when dudes do bounce? Because they feel like they're going to get frowned upon. They just like let the women do it or let, you know. I think bounce is just what we do, man. Like even some of the female rappers, like I didn't hear them and they'd be like, I, I, I don't just do bounce music. Yeah, like, they make it like, like, yeah, like that's it's bad. It's all for the hip hop. I, I got a song called I Got Money Now. Shout out to Black, Black Mile, you right. feel me? I went back and got that because I've been big around the world and I'm seeing what the world love. So it's about marketing and promoting. Like you, New Orleans lose it because they get in their feelings about what they think they should give. Mm -hmm. But you got to give the people what they feeling and what they right. loving, you know right. what I'm saying? Like the world want a hot boy reunion. It's not a hot boy reunion without everybody. Oh yeah, you feel and me? all your lives, all you ever do it. No, no matter how niggas might feel, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing personal. It's right. all business. I don't got no issue with Baby, Manny, Juvie, Wayne, or BG. You know, we all have say things, you know, dissed each other uh, uh, whatever it right. may be. Yeah. You know, man, I'm 41 years young, man. You feel me? And, you know, like, 
them my brothers, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I'd have been pissed off about a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, it won't stop me from working with them. Like, I'm I'm, I'm a businessman, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And you clean you too. Yeah, man, I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm real clean right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm shot. Yeah, white clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah you shot. So, so, you know, I, I just feel like, man, we gotta lead by example, bro. And I think they gonna like, I, I, I just wait and see what's going on, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you but you're right, the turn, like when I think about even the bounce, like you were saying, everybody love our stuff. And that's like saying, get rid of second line, and get rid of the, the black mask, and get rid of gumbo, get rid of jazz. You can't get rid of bounce. That's right, all gotta, the shit that make us who we is. So we, stay, man. Yeah, we got we gotta embrace what would make us unique, and that's why people love our city so much and stuff like that. Um, and people try to remake what they they look at us like, damn, they ain't using it. Well, let me Bankroll do. Fresh love you too. Get, oh, that was my Bankroll favorite. Fresh that was my love you. Me and him yeah. actually were about to put together a little hot boy tour, like me and him on some right. little hot boy, big hot boy shit, you know what I'm saying? Peace, and we man. did a couple shows together, you feel me? And I actually had a song with him and Boosie called Uh, the remix. I put to be shooting a video for that Bankroll got killed, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, me and Bankroll actually put the ball like a hot boy together. Like me and Wayne had a show together in Mississippi. And um. I think I posted a picture with me, him, and Soul, Soul Jewelry on there on my Instagram. And um, Wayne had just did the bottle like a hot boy with Stevie J on remix. So I was telling them how Bankroll Fresh fuck with him because he had already had me and Juvie on there, right? So Wayne like, man, I just did the song. I'm like, man, shit, damn, you need to get on the record. He like, it's cool, blah, blah, blah. So me and Bankroll took one of Wayne's verses. And put it on the song, you know what I'm saying? We made the whole Hot Boy song, and that's how that came about, you know what I'm saying? With all of us on that motherfucker. I never me? knew that, man. Like yeah. I said, rest in peace, Big Bro. Like I said, he was always been in New Orleans, always show love. Now, like I said, I see you got the New Orleans in the background, black and gold, Straight same up. shit. Always. Um, what, when people say I'm from New Orleans, not Louisiana, cause some people from Louisiana feel a certain way about that. Like, man, New Orleans people don't really rock with us. They kind of cocky, arrogant. They do us like New York did the South. When they like, we don't care, but they ain't real hip hop. And Baton Rouge doing their thing now, yeah. you know? But they feel like for a long time, y'all didn't see us well. But now we own and we love the South, but y'all kind of act like y'all just New Orleans and we don't care about Louisiana. How do you feel about the other places in Louisiana and when people say I'm from New Orleans, now. Bro, I think it, it comes to the point where you have to grow up. And I was like that too, you know, it was just New Orleans. And there's a lot of immature minded people out there, you know, that, that don't realize that it's better in numbers, you know what I'm saying? And just everywhere, bro, like Kodak, shout out to Kodak Black, man. Um, Kodak did the song, Fuck How It Turned Out For Me with me, him and Lil Wayne on all platforms right now, man. He did it out of love, you know, and um, how he putting together Something with all Florida, the OGs and the pop. And I said, I'm gonna put together a Louisiana thing. And I, I heard it first. Out, you know what I'm saying? Everybody they wanna fuck, it don't matter where you from. It's like in the feds, we had these cars, you know what I'm saying? The Louisiana car, you know what I'm saying? And we gonna put it together, bro. Like, I feel like, you know, I used, when I came home, I was doing Louisiana moves, volumes, you know what I'm saying? I was putting dudes together, blah, 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 you know? But the vision wasn't embraced, you know? And I think a lot of people in New Orleans just stuck in their ways, bro. You know how we is, you know, but you have to grow up and open up your mind and see the world, not just your where block, you at. Your block you feel me? You gotta see the world, not the block. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Man, any last words you wanna leave with the people Turkey? Like I said, I wanna let you know. We ain't gonna never leave no last words. Bro. Oh, well, not, not last words like <laughs> that. Not last words, I mean, you know anything you want the people to hear, right? right. Not last I want, words. I want people to know, man, you know, that it don't stop, man. We keep it popping. Rich Thuggin album out right now, man, on all platforms. I'm still doing music, you know. My artist, Chopper Boy, man, you know what I'm saying? He out of Birmingham, you feel me? Yeah. And um, yeah, doing this thing, man. Y'all stay tuned for that. I am looking for artists. I want to sign, not to my record label, to management. I'm looking to manage some artists from Louisiana, man. I'm extending it, you feel me? Like, And another thing people got to understand, a lot of people can rap, make music, do whatever. But you got to build your buzz up. You know what I'm saying? Don't expect people to be like, come on, come on, just because you rap. Yeah, nigga sleeping on me. Yeah, nah, your buzz is not buzzing. That's all. So y'all got to get on y'all social media platforms, man, and push the button consistently. Every day, push the button consistently, man. Even That's how I keep my name relevant. 
you know, um, I got this app called Bigo, B-I-G-O. I got the YNT agency. This app, you can make up to $30,000 a month. You know what I'm saying? And you basically get paid to market and promote yourself. You feel me? It's like 122 countries on that app that you can actually go direct to. I just was on there with people from Australia, Kenya, and Canada. Uh, we was all together on a platform. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just the different time zones. And, you know, one thing the world understands the language of love, bro. So if you not a conversate in love, you could conversate with anybody. And I think that's what we missing, bro. We missing love, which is God. You feel me? So when people start loving, man, and stop hating, because hate ain't number love going in the opposite direction, then everything will be good. Stop competing, stop comparing, and stop measuring, man. You know what I'm talking about? That's an immature person, man. We got to grow up and grow out. I got money now. I got money now. Y'all heard it, bro. We out. GDP and Turk, we out, baby.